a Dear Media original podcast. All right, the time has come. Oh, man, all right, here we go. So we're going to start this off by taking a shot of tequila because we feel like that's just what we need to do Some to get in the spirit. Some of us need to prove that they can hold their liquor with tequila these days. <laughs> Grown up a little bit, you know? Have you? 18 years later. Here's... You and me, kid. <laughs> <laughs> I have to have a chaser. Ew. Tastes like Cabo. Oh, my God. Wow. Okay. <laughs> On that note, here we go. <laughs> Let's jump right in, huh? We've actually stayed in touch over the years, yeah. I will say. Yeah. I do feel like we've reconnected a little bit more in the last year and a half. Mm -hmm. We ended up seeing each other in Laguna Beach, which was a ton of fun. You got yeah. to meet my kids. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we just really continued the conversation. And you came to me about doing this podcast, and I was really excited. Yeah. I think this is... Um... You know, this was something that uh, I've been sitting on for a while. I wanted to, I think once podcast came around, I felt like this was a, be a, this would be a good space for us to go back and rewatch and kind of open up this, for me at least, open up this this box that I locked up and, and <laughs> hid for a very yeah, long I time. Yeah, try to forget. <laughs> um, you know, and, and actually just see what the show was and see what it's like to, to view it years later. I think it'd be really interesting and we can offer more, you know, kind of behind the scenes and tidbits to fans of the show, people that were interested in it, of um, what it was like to be involved with the show. Because, you know, sometimes y you kind of get little pieces here and there where you talk uh, an interview on a red carpet or something mm -hmm. really quick. Um, but um, to be able to actually dive in and kind of really pull back the curtain on everything that happened. Yeah, I agree. It's exciting. It needs to be done. I, I agree. It needs to be done. Also, I think it's important to note you and I both have not seen this sh the show since it aired. Mm -hmm. So it has been 18 years since we've watched it. And I think now it's different because we're so removed from it. You know, we're not so emotional about everything anymore. So mm -hmm. we'll be able to take a step back, remove ourselves from the situation and just really break it down. You know, how do we remember it? What really went down? I think it's going to be fun to go back and, and relive it. Yeah. Um, although I'm not going to lie, I have a little bit of anxiety just thinking about sitting down and watching those years because it wasn't always the easiest for me. Of course. I don't feel like I was portrayed in the best light or accurately. Mm -hmm. I think at times, absolutely. Um, I remember just speaking in a general sense, there were only a couple times where I felt like they really showcased our relationship. Mm -hmm. And those moments I was like, thank you. That was us. And that's sweet. And it was fun. But that was they were so far and few between that majority of the time I walked away from it going, well, that's bullshit. That's yeah. not me. That's not what happened. And so I'm actually really excited to break it all down again. Yeah. I mean, look, you got to hand it to MTV. They had an agenda. Um, they obviously talked to a lot of people to get this show started. Yeah. Um, and they, you know, little backstory on that. They showed up on our campus. I remember hearing about it for a little while. It was, See, it was, there yes. was rumors flying for like a year. Do you remember that? Yes. And it I was, was like, that's not true. Yeah, it was a coming. long time. And then all of a sudden, one day there was a table at break and lunch mm -hmm. that had MTV producers handing out packets and you could fill it out. Just basically questions about your life. Um, and I remember people lined up. Uh, I, I sat to the side with a lot of other people that were like, oh, like MTV, like whatever happened to music television, like I would never do something like that. But in my and mind, I auditioned. <laughs> yeah, no, but in my mind, I was like, hmm, I, at this point, you know, I, I knew I wanted to work in entertainment um, in some capacity uh, and I, I wanted to be a host for MTV. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? Maybe I could talk to these MTV producers and see, you know, what, what exactly is going on here? Maybe there's an angle and let's just make a contact. Let's network a little bit. Yeah. Um, and so I didn't get a packet right away, but in between break and lunch during one of my classes, I excused myself to go to the bathroom and they were still sitting out there. And so I walked <laughs> up to them and I was like, yeah, so like, like, what's the deal here? Like, what are you guys doing? And of course they were very casual about it. It was like, yeah, uh -huh. we just want to show a little bit of what it's like to, to live in a beautiful beach town and what the kids are up to and what are their activities and just oh, the fun innocent, that they have. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just like a documentary, yeah. you know? And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I'm like, <laughs> well, that's cool. And I was like, well, why do you need to fill out, why do we need to fill out this entire packet? I mean, it was like, like a 20-page packet. Yeah. It was a big packet. And they're like, oh, well, we just want to get, you know, a good taste of, of what's, you know, what's going on in your life and, and the people that in your life so we can kind of connect some dots. And I was like, oh, okay. You know what? Screw it. Give me one. So they hand me one and I go home and I fill out the thing. Um, and then I think from there, I didn't hear anything for a couple weeks or maybe a week or two. Well, well no, 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 it was that week because I was actually home, quote unquote, sick the day that they were there. And I remember being like, <laughs> wait, what MTV is at school? And I faked being sick. I was so pissed. 
So I That's actually funny. felt like when people started getting on camera interviews, I didn't get one. And I felt like, cause I was a day behind everybody. But that weekend I went to go, I went to Boulder to go look at the school with my mom and I still hadn't gotten a call from MTV and you had, everybody mm. had except for me and the whole damn school. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to get it. And then I was coming home that Sunday and MTV finally called me. But it, I think it happened pretty quickly. It definitely happened like that week. You know what I just remembered was, it, yeah, it was that week because by the next week they were gone. They weren't allowed to yeah. be on campus yep. because it was early February and the Super Bowl halftime show with Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake where yep. there was that uh, wardrobe malfunction <laughs> and Janet Jackson's boob revealed itself. Yes. Um, <laughs> that was an MTV production. Yeah. And so from there, uh, the PTA, uh, Parent Teachers Association, is that what it is? I think that is sure. what it Let's go with that. For. I yeah. should know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, they were like, all right, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's, and it's funny that it, it took that. Right. right. There's already so, like the red flags of, of wanting to shoot these kids in their lives is, is something. But then this halftime show at a Super Bowl where a wardrobe malfunction occurs, all of a sudden the PTA was like, you know what? No MTV. That's where we draw the line. Yeah. It is interesting because they did. Initially, they had the school on board. They were supposed to shoot at school mm -hmm. in the middle of class. And, and then I think the parents, to your point, after MTV had the Super Bowl mishap. Then the parents said, what are we doing? Why are we letting these cameras in there? It's going to be a huge distraction. And rightfully so, by the way, it was interesting and hard enough in its own right, let alone having cameras in class with you. Yeah. Um, so the school pulled out. But by that point, they already found all of us. So mm -hmm. it didn't matter. So we did. We filmed only on the weekends. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we were in school all week. And I think sometimes maybe a Thursday afternoon after school, but mostly it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Very much a formula to the show of, all right, how are they going to get basically all these stories that they gathered from these packets? Right. Mm -hmm. And then I, I did an interview with them where they brought me in yep. and they asked me all these questions. And I remember like one by one, more people would come in and all these questions. And I'm just this like awkward so naive, like little boy, <laughs> like talking like, yeah, well, you know, like, oh, I got this girlfriend, Kristen, like, she's pretty cool. And like, you know, like, got these other friends and like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like our relationship's a little bit rocky. So it's kind of like- Can we talk about this packet though? Because I'm not kidding. The questions were setting us up. Do you remember the questions? Yes, it was remember. like, okay, I do. It was like, list your five best friends and what you hate about them. I was like, oh, okay. Whoa. And then I do remember one of the questions was, who do you think is going to be prom- Queen. And I said, I don't know. And I don't care as long as it's not Lauren Conrad. You and I oh actually went to a coffee shop together to gosh. fill them out. Do you remember that? No, I don't remember yes, that. Yes. You and I filled it out together. And I'm sure. Did we I must approve have that been... message? No. And I'm sure <laughs> we were like, what own. are you writing? No, but you can't see what I'm writing. <laughs> I like, can see that happening. Yes. I can see that. I'm shocked we even did it together. Oh, um, my but they, gosh. the questions were setting us up to divulge all of this. Yeah information and because obviously mm -hmm. they were trying to get to the bottom of things which they did oh <laughs> uh, sure uh yeah and then um it's just wild how it all happened because so they found they found our group and they initially said you know they they had you and they had lauren pegged mm -hmm. um and then <laughs> they said when they finally started catching wind of me they were like okay who is this girl because clearly she's gonna be our drama girl she's a bit of a pistol yeah, yeah so they literally i was in colorado and they said can you please come to the high school as soon as you land i was like absolutely <laughs> i will be there <laughs> <laughs> you're like i knew you'd call yeah thank god <laughs> Um, and then we filmed the pilot, which was so PG compared to the show. Although now the show is PG compared to what's on TV these days. But at the time, it wasn't necessarily. Um, but the pilot, because what they did was we filmed the pilot and then they sat us all down with our parents mm -hmm. because we were, well, I was 17, but they had to get our parents to sign off on it. I was 17 when we started and then eventually turned 18. Yeah. Right. So our parents had to approve it. So it was a very watered down version of what the show was actually was. Was this when they was. showed us that that teaser at the St. Regis? Yes. With, Remember that? Yes. We went with all of our parents and they showed it to us and we were like, oh, this is not bad. This is great. <laughs> ah, see, oh, man. We, we have to try to find our, uh, we got to get our hands on that footage because I don't, I was, I was watching the pilot mm -hmm. um, and I was like, wait, was this what we were shown? Is this what the parents were shown or not? I don't think it was. I don't think it was either. Cause I just I'm remember- glad that you cleared that up for me. Cause yeah, cause I, yes. I don't remember. I do remember, yeah, walking away from it going like, oh, well that's like, that's casual. And this is, this is who they're showing. Um, By the way, now that we've been in this business a very long time, this just occurred to me. I feel like what they showed us was very different than what they showed to the network to get the show picked up. Oh, we, we're going to get to the bottom of this in the podcast. Well, so let's talk about, 
who was on the show, how we all kind of came together. Okay. So it was mostly a group of seniors, mm -hmm. you included. And then it was Talon and I, and we were the two juniors. And how mm -hmm. I fit into it was because you were my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, to be honest, I really had no involvement with that group on the yeah. show. Talon didn't really either. I mean, obviously, we would see each other at parties here and there. Mm -hmm. But I really didn't associate with Lauren or Christina or Trey or anybody um, other than I do remember seeing Lo at parties and her and I would have a little interaction, but yeah. I was definitely not friends with that group. So for me, sure. I did feel like I was put in these situations that I never normally would have been in. Mm -hmm. And I was forced to hang out with these people that I really, you know, just didn't necessarily want to be. I think that comes off on the show a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think it does. <laughs> they, they captured that for sure. <laughs> they, uh, that's a big thing is people ask you like, were you guys all friends? And, you know, Laguna is a small town mm -hmm. and we, we were in a bubble and I think that this is a something that they really highlighted um and and yeah like everyone seems to be friends with one another but that's not necessarily the case no. you know some people were yeah we had our groups of friends but they made this group of people seem like this is a clique of friends mm -hmm. and they're around each other all the time and that was just not the case no. i mean it is a small town but you know laguna is like twenty five thousand people uh there was about a uh, thousand people in, in our high school um, and so we you knew who obviously yeah, everybody so you knew was, everybody. right? You're but you're not hanging out. Yeah, and you knew all the shit that was going on in their lives in yeah, one way or another. Sure did. <laughs> um, so people had their opinions, of course. But um, yeah, we didn't all hang out. So and we'll get into this in the podcast. Like, there's certain things, certain events that happen. For example, in the first episode, this you know hotel party at this <laughs> black and white affair, I, we did not have hotel suite parties where somebody was just like throwing down a credit no. card booking the suite. No, this is obviously <laughs> a location that is uh, film friendly for MTV. Uh, they can bring everybody in here. So, you know, there's a lot of that. And and I think part of the formula of the show was like, all right, we'll set up, we'll have these little conversations with different people and then we'll have an event and then we'll kind of do a debrief after with certain, right. certain people in conversation. So <clears throat> they obviously had a plan going in after understanding all the information about us. Um, but yeah, cast wise, I remember there was a little bit of a trial and error period for them as well with the guys because we it was, you know, Dieter and Polster and Trey and myself. Uh, we were all friends. We we're all in the same grade. We've mm -hmm. grown up together. Uh, they threw talent in the mix. Right. One, one day, I think it was one of our first days of filming. If I remember this correctly, uh, I did a scene with with Lauren at a coffee shop at Heidelberg. Uh, and then from there, they had um, talent, Polster, Dieter and myself walking down a street talking about something that we wanted to do. It was very rough. <laughs> and Talon being in the mix was so weird. Right. And I remember he felt weird. He was just like, I'm just going to kind of like talk like I'm cool with you guys. And he was right, like, hey, you guys, guys are a real group of friends. So he's the yeah, odd man and out. And he was to a total odd man out. Yeah. He was like, I'll, like, and he was like throwing out ideas like, gosh, should we like go bowling tonight? Like he, he was really cool about it. Uh, but he was put in a, in a very awkward situation. Yeah. And I think they quickly realized, all right, that's not something that we can get by as a friend group, right? Did that scene ever make it? I don't think so. Yeah, I yeah. don't remember seeing that scene. Yeah. So it's interesting. Um, so we'll see. <laughs> it's funny. Well, and I think, so basically our situation. So mm -hmm. we dated for real my sophomore year, your junior year, right? And we were together for, mm -hmm. I think, a little over a year. And I would say that was actually probably the best that we ever were. Right before MTV showed before up. Before MTV showed up, one hundred percent. And then so what happened was by the, the way, a year like a year in high school. That's, that's a freaking eternity. That's a pretty good I'm run. I'm proud of us. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, and we we were great. I mean, I would say like you were my first love. Like we really had a very sweet, great relationship. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> I take full credit. Um, at the beginning, wait, 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 wait. You take full credit. <laughs> I take let's, full credit for what I'm about to say. Let's unpack this. Yeah, a little yeah, bit. yeah. We'll unpack it. <laughs> <laughs> I owe this to you. So the beginning of my junior year, your senior year, so a few months before MTV came, I broke up with you and I very quickly hooked up with Talon and stopped me if did I'm you, wrong. Wait, did you break up with me first? I think so. Uh, did you break up with me? No, no, no. I'm just making, I'm wondering when the hookup to the breakup uh, timeline occurred. Okay, I, let's get Talon on the phone because <laughs> I thought I broke up with you first. Did I cheat on you? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I remember, do That's, you remember- I'm sorry if I did. Do you remember <laughs> making me a notebook of pictures? Yes, and, a scrapbook. Yeah, a little, oh, yeah. little scrapbook. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I I've remember you- spent a you, lot of time on that You thing. made one feeling really guilty, by the way. Do you think that's why? I think you were I already- I think it's because I was grounded all summer and I needed something to do. <laughs> why were you grounded? Yeah, that's a whole other <laughs> conversation. <laughs> Such a troublemaker. I think I was. Um, there, was, there was a point where I think you were making one for me, but then 
something went down. I mean, we, look, our, our relationship, it got towards the end there, the last or last year of high school for me. Yeah, it was a roller coaster. We yeah. were on and off. And um, I think that, yeah, you had missed made a misstep, if you will. Okay, I'll give you that. <laughs> you I'll give you, you that. I, I don't remember cheating on you, but maybe I you, just um, changed the narrative in my own head. <laughs> sure, sure. There I was, do remember hurting you there, regardless. There you go. I know I broke your heart. There was a little bit of a hiccup and and you showed up to work with this photo album. Oh. And, and it, was, it wasn't finished yet, but you were like, I feel really bad and I want to give you this because oh, <laughs> you wanted nice. to make it better. Yeah. <laughs> but it was incomplete. After I broke your heart. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, oh, wow. And we and I had a decision to make, and and I think that from there I was like, all right, let's um, oh, like it was just you know one time, and we'll 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 carry on. And so then from there, I think we tried to continue to make it work, but but then yeah. you started hanging out with Lauren, and I think a couple other people. Yeah, well, I think it was like which was I totally mean, valid. <laughs> yeah, I well when we were definitely when we were never when we were together. Right. Yeah, I was. Right. I would not. And this is a part right, of. Yes, I'll no. get into this in, in the show. Is that. Something I was very uncomfortable with in the whole thing was MTV, you know, portraying me as this guy who's just out in the open, like playing two girls. Right. And I look, I know that I obviously, um, you know, you're you're young and 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 uh, you know, not very smart in these in these years of your life. And so I think that um, that was never obviously an intention of just more being somebody that was so lost at this point in their life. Obviously, had their heart broken by someone that they thought they're incredibly in love with yeah. at 18 years old. Yeah. And then you know, having something else present itself and not knowing what to do. No, and I mean, listen, I get that. I broke your heart and you, you probably didn't trust me, which I completely understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally valid. <laughs> um, but it was interesting because, so all of this happened before MTV came. Yep. And then when MTV did show up, they caught wind of what happened. And I want to say, and I could be wrong about this, but I feel like when MTV came, you and I were actually really trying to work on the relationship. We weren't back together, but I think it was more of us trying at least. And we filmed the pilot. Things were not great. Um, but then when the season started filming, I think we were back together. But MTV wanted to obviously keep the love triangle going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're shaking your head. I could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we had a couple of times where it was on and off. There was there was there were a couple of missteps. Okay, uh, <laughs> we'll get into all of that. But yeah, yeah uh, that um, I know you're very sorry for, it, but it's okay. We've we've moved past them. Um, yeah, we grow up, right? So yeah, but we 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 tried to uh, to continue to make it work. But I think um, yeah, it was one of those things where, I mean, because we were there was a point where. Remember when you got, you were in trouble for something. I don't know. You, what you, else you, is new? Yeah. <laughs> and you were grounded for a while and you wanted, you wanted to run away. Yes. Oh my God. I love that you're bringing this up. Okay. You win best boyfriend award because I literally <laughs> was like, I'm running away. I had it all planned out. And instead of Steven being like, you're fucking crazy. He was like, yeah, no. Okay. He was like entertaining it and being really sweet and supportive about it. I remember thinking, I was like, <laughs> at some point she's going to realize that this is a terrible idea and the logistics of it all. The whole situation of like, wait, how are we going to have money? Where are we going to live? What's like, once you're just driving down the road, like yeah. sure, like, oh, there's a thrill. Like, oh, all right, man. we're running away. But then at some point there has to be some sort of conscious going like, Hmm. What the fuck are we going to do now? Maybe not my best decision in life. So I yeah, think that, but I never ran away. So I did, I guess, figure it out. Do you remember out. where we were going to go? I want to say Florida. That's right. Well, look at that. I remember you were like, we'll go to Florida. And yeah, I thought, just You had the all the answers. You're like, I, I got this all planned out. <laughs> I was serious. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to entertain this for a minute and we're going to get through this. It was very sweet. Very um, sweet. But... Yeah, um, I uh, I got caught for shoplifting. I'll just tell you guys. Oh, that's that's good. Yeah, and the issue was, it was me and I want to say two or three friends um, all of my girlfriends put clothes in their purses. I had them on me. So when the cops came, I was going, well, I didn't steal anything. This is bullshit, you know, and they believed me. We went down to the police station and they strip searched us. And then they found out, obviously, I had a lot of clothes on me. I got 100 hours of community service for lying. And all of my friends got like 20 hours. That was a good lesson for me, though, honestly, because actually lying is my number one thing now. And I was a bit of a liar in high school, I could say. Yeah, just a little <laughs> so, bit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so we've stayed in touch pretty well over. I mean, I'm not pretty well. There would be, there would go, there would be. Well, we can say it. When I was married, we didn't stay in touch as much. Of course. Yeah. Which, it yeah. would be very brief, almost, I don't even know. We, we yeah. bumped into each other somewhere, or if, if or actually, we didn't. That we was didn't, my fault. We didn't really see each other, though. Why was it your fault? You're married. Well, right. <laughs> I mean, up. I'm able to maintain friendships with my exes, but um, yeah. 
<laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Other was... people don't like it so much. Oh, okay, I got you. Right? I got you. <laughs> um, yeah. And oh, I think well, that's the large reason why when I got a divorce, you and I were able to reconnect. Yeah. Because I, I was a free woman. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. You know, what's funny. I remember one conversation we had um, when you were when you were writing your book. Yeah. Right? And you sent me a picture and you're like, hey, can I get approval for this? <laughs> For my book. What picture was it? I don't even remember. It was a picture of us from high school. Okay. Like we're just hanging all over each other. We right. look super young and Aww. very innocent. Uh, little did we know what was ahead of us. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, again, just a couple people in love at 17 years old. Yeah. Thinking that like, oh, this is the rest of our life. Everything's great. Right? Literally though. Um, and so you're like, oh, I'm going to use this picture. And I was like, well, where are you using this, using this picture? You're like, I'm using it in my book. I'm like, I know, but what's the chapter? <laughs> like, <laughs> Can I get a little like? I'm like, don't worry about it, Steven. I mean, show me some words. <laughs> like what? I, I can't just approve this picture without uh, any context of where my face is. You were the only one who questioned anything, in. by the way. Everyone was like, "Yeah, sure, no problem." <laughs> Stephen gave me a hard time. I was like, "God damn it!" So then you sent me the chapter, and it, it, it was sweet. And you kind of, you know, you kind of breezed through it, talking through your point of view. Um, I wrote that book when I was young. Still, I just want to point that out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, that was a that was a, a funny exchange. But um, yeah, there's just times over the over the years we check in and, and say hello when it was appropriate. Yeah, and then, you know we we're both living our lives. But, right. Um, but obviously, always been in each other's corners. Always been rooting for each other. Yeah. There was well, never like we've always just I think really cared about each other, which I think yeah. is important. Yeah. Well, I think we you know we obviously went through an experience that uh, is pretty unique, and it's hard for a lot of people to understand. Yeah. Um, Having something thrown in your life uh, like MTV and, and the show and the reaction to it, um, you know, not a lot of people can can relate to that. Right. And, and as much of of an extra just, you know, wrench it threw into everything that we had going on and trying to be young people that were working out their relationships and their <laughs> friendships and figuring out who they are. Then you throw in the element of this this um, TV crew and, and this this network that actually aired the show because, I mean, I don't know about you, but I was like, they're not airing. This? There's no way this is going anywhere. This is ending up in a box. Do you remember how much we got paid for that first season? I think twenty five hundred dollars. I don't even know if it was that much. I think it was. I think it was, think it was two. I think it was two thousand bucks. Okay. Well, but here's the thing. I remember. Maybe I got paid more than you. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You know what? <laughs> Talk to these I'm just joking. No, I will but say I mean, this. I would have done Lauren it for free. and I free. did renegotiate for season two. Did you renegotiate? Yeah, I made season? more money for season two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're on the same page. Thanks for there. getting me in the mix, Burks. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was going to be our last season. We were hitting. The, we were fucking hitting the road. Yeah. We're like, we're out of here. Um, um, I honestly would have done it for free though, because at that point in high school, to me, it was more of a competition. Like every. Everybody wanted it. And I was like, I'm going to get this show. I'm super competitive. That has not changed. So I literally, when they told us that we, they were going to pay us, I was like, oh my God, great. I know. I know. <laughs> and I, I remember thinking like, oh, we're going to get some like free parties out of this, like like free trips. Yeah. Like we're we're going to like MTV is coming to us and wants to finance these op these opportunities, these mm -hmm. parties, if you will, for us to all hang out and get together. Right. It's like, this is <laughs> great. Like, yeah. <laughs> we thought we had them. And uh, in the end, yeah. we had no idea. Also, um, but like we had clearly no idea what the show was going to turn into. Like no. in my head, when it first happened, remember True Life on MTV? In mm -hmm. a way, I felt like it was going to be that. Just like a little one-off documentary about, you know, living in the real OC. I thought it was going to be a movie. Yeah. Like it was going to be like had, an hour and that's it. We had no idea really what it was going to be. And I mean, honestly, like overnight, our lives changed. Yeah. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. I mean, I I, I went to um, uh, college basically trying to get away from everything that I kind of knew. I wasn't running from anything. It was just like, oh, I want a new experience in life. And my parents, they had two kids. They were already put through out-of-state tuition, and they only wanted two kids. So when I came along, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, third child. Are you first, an oops baby? First mistake over here. Oh, I didn't and know that. And they're like, "You're staying in state." I'm like, "All right." Well, a lot of people are going. Everyone goes to Santa Barbara, USC, San Diego, yes. stick around town. Yes. I'm like, "I'm gonna go up to San Francisco." Uh, and I think in the show they actually painted like Lauren and I were going to college together. Oh yeah, which, no, they did. <laughs> which was not the plan. She was going to fit them, and I was going to San Francisco State. We just happened to choose the same city. Right. Um, and so. Uh, but then I, I get there and about a month into school is when the show premieres. And mm -hmm. it was, um, wow, like September after wanting to have like a fresh start, like didn't think that one all the way through of yeah. <laughs> the whole, your well, whole last four years or last couple of years, you know, uh, broadcast on TV. interesting because you guys all graduated high school and left where Talon That's and right. I 
then had to be senior in to high school. Stick around and I remember the freshman. the teachers judging you. Yeah, well, it actually helped me pass marine biology. So thank you, Mr. Smart. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, can we get into that story a little bit? Yeah, well, I mean, I just remember he was like fascinated by the whole thing. He had me like sign some newspaper article and I was like, great. Your autograph? Because I'm never, it was, what? He wanted your autograph. Yes. And I was like, wow, this is awesome. Was that the first time you signed an autograph? I think it was, Mr. That's Smart, my teacher, marine biology teacher. In senior year. Yes. But I remember the freshman looking at us differently and I was like, okay, this is weird. Um, but that's when I kind of knew like, okay, what is going on here? What is all yeah. of this? But I don't know. I don't know what was worse being still in Laguna Beach high school or going off to a new city. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. I think I had a month to meet some people in college, which was nice. And I am forever grateful to this friend group that I met because they did protect me in a way. It was, mm. it got hostile in areas. There was this kind of SoCal versus NorCal thing. Um, and we'd yeah. go out at, at, um, and parties in college uh, at San Francisco State. And we would just, if we went to a house that was predominantly NorCal kids and we showed up, uh, I was a red flag. And then these kids were all from LA actually as well. And they had LA hats on and stuff. So How funny. we would get into, I mean, it was even more of a catalyst for them to want to start a fight. Wow. So there were, there were multiple situations where I was involved in just like brawls out of nothing no besides way. just showing up and being a kid from Laguna Beach. I did not know that. Yeah, it was not All right, fun. I'll take high school then. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I think I'll t- take hanging out with Mr. Smart any day. <laughs> wow, I, I didn't know that. I remember the first time uh, I think somebody, and I, so it was also, I should back it up a little bit. Um, I remember, you know, the show comes out and you're like, all right, this isn't really, again, and this is like, not nobody's going to really watch this. Right. And I was on the waiting list uh, for a month in the dorms before I actually got on campus. And then uh, the the show had just premiered when I got off the waiting list and put in the dorms. And I remember I walked in and my roommate, uh, Ryan Satin, by the way, he eventually worked for TMZ. Oh, um, God. Uh, How funny is that? Uh, And uh, shout out Ryan. Uh, Oh, wow. So you have a connection at TMZ? (laughs) Did he always write nice things? He's not there anymore. Yeah, yeah. But um, we... uh, but he was, yeah, and, and he was welcoming and, and, and he introduced me to other people, which, which was great. Um, but it did get a little weird there uh, the, the first semester. And I mean, I'd walk down the hall and cameras would kind of pop out of a, out of a you know, a, a door and, and just yeah. like snap something as I'm in my towel trying to go take a shower. Oh my gosh. So thankfully, the RAs and whatnot caught wind of it all and they, they upgraded me to the sophomore dorms. Oh, no. Which, all right, there's, there's a little bit of a bonus there <laughs> okay. for the second semester. Take so it. the second semester I got put in, in the sophomore dorms and they put me in a room uh, at the end of the hall. Uh, it was a handicapped room where they, they were like, look, you're going to have somebody else come in uh, at, at some point. They're going to be here. And then for the whole semester, they just gave me the runaround that, yeah, somebody's coming in. You're not going to be by yourself. Uh, but I did have, you know, have the whole place to myself wow. the entire semester, which was which was bonus. It was the a great hang. being on TV. <laughs> yeah, <I> Restaurant <laughs> reservations and a whole dorm to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> by the last like couple months, it was like, all right, they're just making sure that I don't take over this whole place. Like I've I've got this spot to myself. That's um, nice. So we took advantage of that a little bit. Yeah. But um, it was yeah, an odd experience. I think um, having it really kind of hits you that like, oh, no, this is real. This is out there and people are, are watching it. Um, but, you know, I just try to continue to live my life as normal as possible. But having the agenda of like, all right, I want to work with MTV. I wanted to be a host for MTV. Yeah. So constantly kind of nudging them like, hey, look, if there's any opportunity to host something, um, you know, I want in. That's when being an MTV VJ was like the coolest job on the <laughs> <Yeah>. planet. <laughs> I remember I was in um, I was in school for about a only a couple of weeks and they needed somebody to come on TRL. Mm-hmm. And obviously at this point, the producers had understood that I was very interested in, in working further with them and, and wanting to do TRL. And so they, they let me go first. And I flew on a, on a weeknight, uh, red eye to New York and did the show crazy whirlwind. That was the first yeah. time, like, cause you're in that energy of, of the TRL audience. It was an MTV show called total, total request live. That was every it afternoon. Was the best show. They showed music videos, uh, for an hour, the top 10 um, yeah. from, from the week. And so uh, a lot of people, of course, would come through there to promote their music and movies and stuff like that. So, but it was an iconic show. I mean, if you don't yeah. know what it was, like that era Carson of Daly, MTV. Yeah, it was the best. Jenny that McCarthy. Was, yes, yeah. it was everything. Yeah, and then I worked with uh, Damian Fahey and Vanessa wow. Manillo, yes. who I give them a lot of credit because yeah. I was just so green, so young coming oh, out of that show. Babies. And they were very cool about it. <laughs> um, but anyways, getting thrown into that whirlwind, which was, all right, you're in Times Square, you're in this live show. There's a lot of people in there. The audience is loud. 
and you know you're promoting the show that you still don't believe is really actually <laughs> happening or a thing you're like this is odd they're kind of telling you this is what you need to say and then right after the show i went right to the airport got on a plane went back to school and yeah. was in a class the next day yeah yeah weird same thing with me because i did trl a few times but i was still in high school and because i was 17 I used to have to have my mom go with me because I was under 18 and I would literally get a phone call and they're like, can you go to New York tonight? And I'm like, oh my God. Okay. I'm all, my mom's in Chicago. I'm like, Hey mom, can you meet me in New York? Miss school the next day. Like it was, it's wild to think about, you know, you're a kid and yeah. you just get these phone calls. It's like, yeah, no, absolutely. I will drop everything and I will yeah. go to New York to do this. I don't even know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> Crazy. Why are we here? <laughs> Why are we How did we end up here? Well, I think you should tell the story because you approached me about it. Yeah, I, I, I've been wanting to do this podcast for a while. It's it's something that was kind of following my interest of of the right place to talk about what it was like to be on Laguna Beach and rewatch the episodes because you know I watched them once. We would get those VHS tapes. Uh, like the, two days before it aired. Yep. Yep. Which so we was, saw it almost in real time. By the way, that's how old we are. God. Kids, we, we didn't get a downloadable link. <sighs> we didn't get a Isn't DVD. That's so sad. It's been we 18 got a years. Fucking VHS tape. <laughs> I know. That had like, like little, We're ancients. <laughs> little Be Kind Rewind sticker on it. It was like, mm-hmm. uh, I'm not rewinding this shit. It's going in a box. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh my God. Be Kind Rewind. <laughs> Blockbuster. Like kids today don't even know what that is. Yep. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So. I knew at some point in my life I would want to come back and revisit the show. And um, I think further I got away from it, I, I am more accepting of it and feel comfortable with it, which I think is a good thing because people were always like, do you regret it? Like, right. do you wish you never did? I'm like, actually, no. Yeah. Like, honestly, it's, it's, it's something that happened. And sure, you wish you could do some things different, which I think we've got a few things to go over in this podcast. Yeah, a couple. <laughs> as we go through the episodes. <laughs> uh, some that I know right now and then some I will yeah. discover yeah. as we watch the episodes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, I'm comfortable with that being such a different person. You know, at another point in my life, it's, it's. I mean, we should almost name ourselves different characters. Like, Truly. That was, that was Steve. And uh, I don't even know. You have um, to come up with a name for bitch. yourself. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the B. Uh, the B. The B. <laughs> the B. So, um, yeah. And, and I, I think... Um, you know, wanting to obviously go through each episode because we haven't watched the whole season yet or season one or season two. No, you and I have both not seen it since, you know, the two days prior to it airing. So it's been 18 years since we've seen this show. And I've got some memories of of certain things that happened, but I know that there's a ton of stuff that we are going to unlock. And, you know, just what are those feelings like? What are the thoughts? What happened? And, And where, you know, MTV and real life crossed. Yeah, because it was often. And I'm excited (laughs) to break that all down and really give viewers, you know, a look behind the curtain. And I think, too, because it's been so long, we're so removed from it now. You know, initially when I saw it, I was so emotional about everything. I'm assuming I won't have that same reaction. I mean, Mm -hmm. I'm sure I'll be, you know, triggered a little bit. But to me, it'll almost be funny now because I'm not so emotionally invested in it still. Um so I'm just excited to relive some of those memories and and break it all down. Yeah, and I think what really jump started actually us here right now is when we did our little reunion for the Get Out the Vote mm-hmm. um, last year. Uh, we, you know, we all came together. We sh- we shared a couple stories, and some some of the people that were speaking and some of the thoughts that they had they triggered a lot of memories for yeah. me, and those came flooding back. But then also they showed a little bit of the show. Um, and I honestly don't remember some of this stuff. I was looking at it like, that's me. Where am I? What am I wearing? <laughs> yeah, no Who kidding. am I talking to? Wow, look at me. <laughs> Why do I <laughs> have like, oh, words drawn right. across my chest? I'm like, oh, that's right. When oh, I was asking Kristen to prom oh, or like cute. just some of and yeah. like the wardrobe, like everything. Yeah. It is such a blast from the past. And yeah. a lot of feelings came back. And it kind of really set things in motion that I was like, look, we, I need to do this at some point. And you and I had actually briefly talked about it before we did that um, that little reunion. We yes, actually we did a, a virtual reunion with the, the cast of the first season of Laguna Beach. Um, mm-hmm. To me, it was almost a tease, though, because we weren't all together. It was, you know, yeah. because it was in the height of COVID. Mm-hmm. And it was almost like it gave us a little taste. But then this, to me, is a little bit more fun because we are going to go back and watch all of the episodes. We're going to really dive in. We're together. Mm-hmm. Like, to me, this is like now we're going to get into the nitty gritty. Yeah. And we're going to bring people in. We're going to talk to cast members. We're going to talk to MTV producers, yeah. whoever we can get, whoever we can reel in, which, by the way, MTV, I feel like 
anybody should come on. I mean, we, I think you, they you, will. you guys paid us 2000 bucks for the first season. Yeah, you owe us, man. And not too much more for the second. So uh, you owe us a little <laughs> bit. Why don't you, we come calling. Uh -huh. You're in. So I brought my kids to Laguna Beach for, um, well, actually, it was their second time going. But it was August a year and a half ago. By the way, your kids are so cute. Thanks. I was really happy Super that you sweet. got to meet them. That they're, was that was exciting. They're adorable. Yeah, they're sweet. Um, and so you and I went to dinner and it was the first time we had seen each other in at probably 10 years, at least, at least. How old is your oldest child? He's nine and a half. What? I know. Isn't that you wild? You have a nine and a half? I have an almost 10 year old. Like what? <laughs> yes. That's how old I am. We're old as fuck. We're old as fuck. <laughs> um, so, and I do, I will say, I remember um, in my, our early twenties, you came over to my apartment on Rossmore. Yep. Remember? So like we we hung out. We stayed in touch. We lost touch a little bit when I was married. Um, I was with my ex for 10 years. So it had at least been 10 years since we had seen each other. Mm. So anyways, we went to dinner. We had a lot of fun. Do we tell the whole story? We, we dance on tables. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's important, like, it's important for them to know. We dance on it's tables. It's important for them to know. <laughs> we may or may not have kissed. Did we? I can't remember. <laughs> I posted a photo of the two of us, and that was my most liked photo of anything I've ever posted on Instagram. I mean, you beat all of my children. You beat like any milestone in my life. So to me, that's actually very sweet because it shows how invested the audience was of Laguna Beach. And I think it's really sweet. And I think my caption was 2004 or 2000 and whatever it was, 20, I guess. Um, and so, and then from there, we've just really stayed in touch. I'll let you decide if you want to tell the rest of the story or not. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Let, let's back up here. Let, <laughs> uh, when, when you posted that picture, mm -hmm. um, I think you had an idea. I was sitting on your Obviously, lap. It was gonna, <laughs> it was gonna get a little bit of a response. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I did as well. You did. You asked me if you could post the picture. I did. I did. And I was like, yeah, of course. I mean, it's a like blurry picture of us, but right. sure, like go for it. <laughs> um, and. Yeah, I, understanding that there was going to be a little bit of a stir, of course. We knew there would be a stir. But I didn't know how much. I mean, no, that photo no, no, was no. everywhere. No, no, no. It, it, that is what we need to talk about here. So I that basically shut down my phone for a full day. I'm sorry. Everyone was coming out of the woodworks yeah. asking me people. So here's here's the thing. There were there were people that were asking me kind of how I was doing. People would text me just to kind of check in, <laughs> and they eventually try to get to a casual way of like. So are you dating anybody? Oh my god! And it was so obvious. I was almost I was shocked by how many people thought I was that stupid. Wow! That were yeah. like, "Hey, it's insulting, what? right?" Totally. Yeah. And th throwing that into the mix, that my phone was ringing off the hook. People, uh, like obviously random numbers were. I had to I had to turn my phone off for really? basically the whole afternoon, oh my and god. it was like I can't. And I kind of like it kind of clammed me up a little bit. Reminded me of when the show came out because like this is way more attention than I'm ever comfortable with. This is, this is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you kind of see, I'm sure I'll see this in the show, but um, not, yeah, never really understanding that there was going to be true attention that came from this, right? Yeah. More like, I think we were using it as like, oh, we're going to have opportunities to Yeah, we'll parlay meet. it into something else. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so the attention from it was, um, was shocking in a way, to say the least. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about <laughs> <was like>, that. <laughs> Yeah, you owe me dinner for that one. Yeah, all right, I'll buy you dinner, no problem. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was it was fun, and that's really how the conversation started with this whole podcast. So I am glad that it worked out, and I think this is going to be a lot of fun, honestly. All right, so I feel like we're we're we've got a lot to talk about. We do. <laughs> we <laughs> we're do. all over the place, but to kind of bring it home for this welcome to the pod episode, um, which welcome everyone. Uh, I think what we're going to do, we're going to get like a whole 360 view of Laguna. We want mm. our perspectives. We want producers' pr perspectives. We'll probably bring in some people that were not related to the show, maybe a fan of the show or yeah. something, um, and talk about, you know, what, you know, their perspective is on it and questions for us. We'll take a ton of questions from you guys. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have, a, we want to have a lot of fun with this. Absolutely. You know, we want to jump back in time, um, relive some things, but um, also, you know, engage a lot with the fans and, and, you know, you guys can chime in and let us know what you want to see out of this podcast mm -hmm. and, and we'll, you know, we'll do what we can to service it. Right. You know, the number one question has always been, was it real? And mm -hmm. so to be honest, I'm most excited to break that down for everybody and mm -hmm. actually walk everyone through each episode and say, OK, here's what really happened. I think it's going to be really fun. And I do have a little bit of anxiety, not going to lie, about going and watching all of these episodes. But 
you know, hopefully I won't be so triggered anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think there's uh there's a little anxiety for, for me as well. Uh, and man, I'm just I'm really interested to see what we're going to uncover and, and the me memories too. that come flooding back. So, yeah. Um, you guys fun. tune in. Uh, we're going to go episode by episode. <laughs> we haven't seen anything yet. So, um, and watch with us. I think it would be fun yeah. if the viewers watch each episode week by week, you know, so that uh, they're on the same page with us. Because yeah. that's what we're going to do. We're going to watch it as we tape each podcast episode, yep. just so that we're not jumping ahead and we can really just focus on that time. Mm -hmm. I think we can only handle like. Uh, like one episode a Emotionally, week. Emotionally, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so uh, our next episode will be, of course, the uh, first season, episode one, episode of Laguna Beach, which is entitled A Black and White Affair. <laughs> Here we go. It was oh. the only one that wore the white dress. <laughs> <laughs> I wore blue. I remember that. <laughs> well, you broke all the rules. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were some rule breakers, weren't we? <laughs> we were. Um, but yeah, we, uh, wow. Um, it's it's going to be, be fun, though. Yeah. <laughs>